Hello there. <laughs> Not since the good old days of Tea Break Mike, but we had so much to talk about in the world of, well, Jurassic World drama. So, without further ado, uh, let's get into this mess of a situation, shall we? So, in today's drama in the Jurassic World community, we have one YouTuber who goes by Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, who's just received three strikes and is about to lose their channel in seven days, which is nice. We also have uh, Tim from uh, Collects Jurassic, who has lost their Instagram account, and another uh, dinosaur YouTuber, you may have heard of him, Best in Slot, who has uh, received a strike. Uh, all of these are basically linked to the same company. So I don't even know why I have this on. Let's take that off. So this all started on the 5th of February, where Tim from Collects Jurassic posted uh, this to Twitter, which said that um, they just got a message from Instagram saying your account has been disabled and you are no longer permitted to use Instagram. Your account has been reported multiple times for violating someone else's rights. Uh, so, as everyone knows, this summer, Jurassic World Dominion, the final in the trilogy of the Jurassic World franchise, is releasing. And with it, of course, are a whole plethora of new toys, new ranges, and all that jazz, as well as dinosaurs that have yet to have even been shown in the Jurassic World universe. Um, you know, something quite big. And what Tim had done from Collect Jurassic, uh, he'd bought one online, and then he'd taken pictures on Instagram and made a YouTube on video unboxing set toy. And I assume that this is what either Universal or Mattel had seen and decided, well, okay, we don't want spoilers. If it was Universal, we'll get rid of this. Or Mattel, that's a toy that's to be yet released officially worldwide. We'll get that banned. Uh, so Collector Asics posted this saying that Colin Trevorrow had purposely dropped Pyroraptor, which is one of, I'm assuming, the toy that he unboxed. I didn't get to see it because this was all happened under me nose. I had no idea about it. Um, and also that, you know, you could actually buy uh, the toy that he had bought online at a site called ToyWiz. So nothing that he had done was, you know, specifically from leaks. And when every Jurassic World movie comes out, especially if you're in the community, you've seen all the toys before they're properly released. You know what I'm talking about. They get leaked into Discord groups and all this jazz. And you, you see them. I've seen them. But I'm not going to make a video on it for this said reason. So this uh, actually escalated further um, when they gave us an update to their YouTube channel actually getting a strike. Now, you can get three strikes on a YouTube channel before it gets terminated. Back in the day, you got a strike, it was like a really bad thing. Now, if you get a strike, there's not too much. I think you can't live stream and that's it. I could be wrong there, but it, it goes within 90 days. But still, a strike is a strike and something that should be a last resort for any company to go to those kind of lengths to stop a creator or a content creator you know, d covering something they don't want covered. But one good thing that came out of this uh, strike was that it showed who was behind all this. This actually was Mattel. Um, now, I've had my own run-ins with Mattel. I mean, you've seen on my channel, I, they've sent me things and I've had to do disclaimer, this is sponsored by Mattel. This video is sponsored by Mattel. So I have worked with them per se, um, but my, my contact with them is very limited. But it appears that they are showing their true colors uh, at the moment anyway. Um, as Collect Jurassic says, today's update, my Instagram appeal was denied. Um, I received a more detailed takedown notification from YouTube identifying Mattel as the copyright holder for a video of toys I bought from the website toywiz.com, who are still listing the toys themselves. Uh, this is unbelievable. Uh, my only run-in with this sort of thing was back in 2018. Uh, I made a video uh, actually covering leaked toys. Um, and uh, it only, the video only went up for about 24 hours. Not even that. I think I put it, I posted it before I went to bed. And by the time I woke up, it had already been like disabled worldwide, copyright claimed, uneligible for, you know, it was blocked. It was basically blocked worldwide. But within those couple of hours, it got like 100,000 nice. views. It was crazy. But I didn't get a strike for it. And, you know, I kind of knew I was doing something a bit cheeky. Uh, so I was fine with Mattel blocking it. I was like, you know what? It is what it is. These things have not been released yet. You cannot buy them. Fair dues. However, they seem to have stepped up their game. Because another YouTube channel and Instagram, you know, toys reviews, and these dinosaur reviews, they post lots of updates to all like uh, dinosaur toys that are coming up and stuff like that, as well as covering some Jurassic World stuff. Um, they got a lot worse. They got three strikes. Basically, Mattel going, yeah, you're losing your channel. That is 
terrifying. A company that is able to, you know, your livelihood, so your passion, you're something you've worked for, you've worked towards. And then all of a sudden, a company without any, you know, no word from them saying, oh, would you mind taking them down? They just basically delete your YouTube channel. Actually, I don't know whether he already had two strikes from something else, but it does appear, you know, this was the final straw that broke the camel's back, or it was all three at once. So they are losing uh, their YouTube channel in seven days. So we have one dinosaur toy reviewer who has lost their um, Instagram, and we have another one that is about to lose their YouTube channel. Uh, all because of Mattel and the toys that aren't technically released but are purchasable. And this is where it gets into a gray area with embargoes and other stuff like that. For instance, let's take I don't know, something I'm really passionate about at the moment, Warhammer. They release codexes for every army. And a couple of weeks ago, uh, somebody got their hands on a Tau Codex, which is an army that has yet to be released, their rules. And what they were doing is they were going on Reddit and posting and answering questions about, you know, everything that was coming up. Now, what do you think Warhammer did? Do you think A, they told them to kindly stop answering questions and just remove the posts, or B, uh, just block them worldwide and delete their Reddit account and everything I had, or C, nothing. They did see. They did nothing. They just let it go, and, and now you can actually buy the codex. And what this did was build hype. I, I There was videos on YouTube. I was, you know, building armies and stuff and thinking, oh, what can I do about this? Um, and it happens no matter what kind of media you're in. So games will, you know, their embargoes might be broken by certain YouTubes. I know that Frontier with Jurassic World Evolution had a, a few instances. In fact, it seems like every time they've had to have an embargo, something's went wrong. Either games released early. There was a guy in France who had Jurassic World Evolution 2 before it was released and they didn't ban his account or anything. They just asked him like, would you mind stop? I think, at least I think they did. They, they asked him, would you mind, you know, not posting this? But they didn't ban him outright. And without social media, these cases would just not be shown at all. Um, I wouldn't have been notified this if I didn't have a Twitter account. And even though I haven't really been as prevalent in the toy community as of recent, since Fallen Kingdom, I've kind of taken a back seat. Does that look good? <laughs> no. But it's up to us to stop this stuff from being abused because YouTube gives companies so many ways in which to punish creators, it doesn't seem fair. And the only thing that we have is to be able to band together and say, no, actually this isn't right. And without making a big fuss, nothing would be changed. And I know that if I was, you know, still making toy reviews, I would be in exactly the same boat, especially if I was able to purchase this. I remember what it was like in 2015 when the toys were released, you know, trying to get my hands on them as quickly as possible and to make a video on them as quickly as possible. I know what the grind's like. I know exactly what was going through Tim's head when he was seeing them able to be purchased. It's like, well, it's able to be purchased. That's not my fault. I'm a consumer. I will buy them. I will review them. You know, the first one to get the video up, gets the views and all all that jazz. And yet, to be punished for that? That is ridiculous. And like I said, if, you know, I'd started my YouTube channel, you know, a, a year ago or so, and, you know, this was my first Jurassic, you know, the final one, and I was wanting to, you know, grow and expand, I would have done exactly the same. And I would probably be in the same boat. I hopefully wouldn't have got three freaking copyright strikes or had my Instagram banned, basically, because it says that he's not able to use Instagram anymore. So I don't know whether they IP banned him or, or anything like that or device banned him. I don't know exactly how it works, but that is really over the top. And not only have we had those two, you know, YouTube, Instagram influencers uh, banned, but actually, um, Best and Slot has received a strike as well. He went on to um, Twitter to say that he had also received a strike from Mattel. Um, now, going off my previous experience, having that video in 2018 claimed and blocked worldwide, I was curious as whether maybe he was over-dramatizing it and saying that it was a strike when actually it was just a claim, which basically does nothing. They just take the money. So I asked him to clear it up. And no, it actually was a strike. Like the one out of three, you get three, you lose your account. Um, but they did, it's, it's just ludicrous. Now, 
I did watch Best and Slot's video, and in it he covered uh, upcoming toys. Uh, it was interesting because I was wondering whether it was actually going to be Universal that was doing this because I know what Best and Slot covered. It wasn't a major spoiler, it was just something that was in Jurassic World Dominion that would be a surprise to people. Before Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom came out, I made a video saying something like, don't watch this, I figured out the ending to Fallen Kingdom, or this could be potential spoilers for the ending of Fallen Kingdom. What's interesting about it is that it was the ending to Fallen Kingdom. Lego said, you can pull a little thing and the top of the roof of the Lockwood Manor falls through and Indoraptor falls down. And what is at the bottom of that Lego set? That's right, the Triceratops skeleton. Now me publishing that video, Universal had the chance to take it down. A really big mouth in the Jurassic World community had figured out the ending to your film that you had worked years on. Uh, but they didn't do that. Even though Besson Sod showed that he had, you know, he'd spoiled a little bit about the movie, um, I had a feeling that it was probably going to be Mattel, judging from what happened with that previous video I'd made. But there is a light at the end of the tunnel, at least for one of them, or at least two. Besson Sod's thing will go up in nine, 90 days and it'll be gone. Collect Jurassic uh, posted this uh, today saying he's got an update. Things are being looked into. I don't know, is this Instagram or is it YouTube? Uh, everyone hold on to your butts, keep it civil, and let's see how this plays out. Because they had actually, um, you know, appealed the Instagram, had been blocked, uh, but they've submitted new appeals uh, with Instagram and YouTube with evidence of fair use, because that's kind of what it is. There was no leaks, there was no other hand, they had it literally in their hands. And if successful, I will voluntarily remove the content as I know that it's Mattel's wishes and I would have if asked before all of this. And that's it. If Mattel had just said that, you know, we don't want this out there, would you mind removing the content? They'd be completely fine with it. We had that in 2018 with Fallen Kingdom. You had Colin Trevorrow saying, don't post spoilers. And you had specific channels or pages on Instagram posting spoilers that then said they weren't gonna post any, but then later did because views and traction and stuff like that. But anyway, <laughs> the thought's there, I suppose. <laughs> but if you thought that was it for Jurassic drama or at least dinosaur drama, no. You, you're wrong. So let's talk Primitive War, shall we? This is a novel kind of based, I think, during the Vietnam War, which has soldiers, you know, in the forests, um, but instead of, you know, guerrilla warfare and uh, fighting actual humans, they're actually coming up against dinosaurs. And it's more of a gruesome, you know, rated 18 kind of look at what a dinosaur, uh, you know, battle could look like between humans and uh, dinosaurs, you know, being gory and all all the, the lovely jubbliness that comes with that. And Connor made a video on it, showcasing, I think, the first chapter or something of the graphic novel to be then produced at Indiegogo, because it needs funding. A couple days ago, before this Mattel thing went off, uh, he retweeted something that Primitive War had said, um, you know, saying thanking Best and Slot for covering it. Um, however, when I clicked on it, it said the content was no longer available. Best and Slot's retweet was, you know, dis it disappeared. Uh, so this let me think, okay, I've heard about this. I've, you know, I've seen it. What's going on here? And then it, it led me into this huge rabbit hole that apparently the author called Ethan uh, was starting to make drama on Twitter uh, and it just it bought some great memes. Some great memes came out of it. Um, the also <laughs> one being, being beautiful. Basically the author of it uh, was going on to Twitter and just saying that, oh, I hate Jurassic World, Jurassic World. He was basically just being an edgelord. He was, he was deliberately being provocative, trying to elicit certain reactions from the community and then just blocking people, even people who are critical of Jurassic World. So a great move by him. I think their, their primitive war account, they removed their Twitter and, and they made a second one, I think, which was also removed, uh, which sucks because honestly, if I was the artist, because the art looks absolutely fantastic on this piece. If I was the artist and I had some guy doing this on, you know, making me look bad, having my artwork that I've spent so much time on reflect his, you know, his views, that would suck. So hopefully uh, he's uh, been reined in or removed from the project. I don't know. He's an author, so probably not. We're just told to not be that way on social media because you will get eaten alive. And finally... On a lighter note, just the general Jurassic World Twitter. 
just being cringe. It's a triangle of drama. You have at the top, you have, you know, this whole Mattel thing, and then the others are, you know, this primitive war uh, debacle that happened, and then the other ones just kind of like Jurassic World Twitter being like, ha ha, relative memes. Jurassic Park, guys. It just reminds me of that meme. What is it? Silent Strand. <laughs> we're trying to be relatable and current. So this has been a longer video than I anticipated to make, but it's definitely something that, I don't know, I just couldn't pass up the opportunity. It's just, there's just so much going, so much that he's talking about. If anything, if I can bring to light the situation that Mattel has done, and especially showing what they've done in the past, which wasn't as bad, and now all of a sudden, they've stepped it up uh, tenfold and are now deleting basically people's YouTubes and Instagrams. You know, their passion. None of this was done with malicious intent. Some of the worst things imaginable were done with the best intentions. I know, quote and dress box, yada, yada, yada. There was no malice. There was no Ill, Ill intent. It was just, you know, people who love the franchise, want to support it, showing their enthusiasm for it. And then Mattel, bam, and whacks the nail that sticks out, gets hammered down, apparently even though it wasn't anything to do with it. But anyway, I'm gonna, I'm gonna end the video here before it goes on for too much longer because I don't want to take up too much of your time. I've got stuff to get back to, but it needs to be addressed. And I think with having the community that is there, I want to be able to broadcast this wider and maybe get some movement done. That uh, Communication, that's it, communication. And if I can help, you know, project that message, that's what I want to do. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna leave it there. And until next time, I'll see you in uh, another video. Bye-bye. <laughs>